So I'm back with another video. This one is on my list of fast pass choices. Now I'm not saying which, which ones you should pick for your trip. Um, I know some parks have the tier system where you can pick one ride from tier one and two rides from tier two. Um, and I know this is, it's very, still very early on in the fast pass plus, um, department. So what I'm saying is current now, um, that's not to say it won't change tomorrow. Um, but like I said, some parks, um, you have to pick one ride from tier one, two rides from tier two. You, in all parks, you can currently pick three fast passes and your three fast passes are all for the same park. Now you schedule these online ahead of time. Um, if you're staying, if you have a reservation, you're staying at Disney World, at the Disney, um, one of the Disney World resorts, you can pick your fast passes 60 days in advance. If you are not staying in the Disney park and you have your, you bought your tickets, you can book your fast passes 30 days in advance. So my list here is just the rides that I feel would be useful to pick a fast pass. So for the Magic Kingdom, um, my first one that I was going to list is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. The reason being it's the newest ride there and thus it is the most popular. I've heard line, um, I've heard people talk of crazy long lines there very early on in the day. That's where people are rushing. Um, my second one, Peter Pan's Flight. Definitely. This is one of the most miserable lines to stand in. It is, there's like nothing to look at and it gets very, very hot and very, very long. And it is a slow um, loading line. It, they're constantly loading people, but it goes very slowly. So Peter Pan's Flight, definitely. Splash Mountain. This is another one that um, I think it can just get really long pretty early on in the day. And it's also kind of another miserable line if you're if it's long enough where you're waiting outside. Once you get close to the loading area, it's much cooler. It's kind of like inside a cave and it's further down. Um, that's not miserable because it's obviously a lot cooler and by then you have more things to look at. But if you're to the point where you, the line is so long that you're standing outside, that can be pretty miserable. And that's probably around the 45 minute to one hour mark, I would guess. Um, and my fourth one is, and I know you can only pick three fast passes, but these are just ones that I think would be a good use of your fast pass reservation. So this one, um, we don't have kids, so this one isn't really for us, but the Anna and Elsa experience, if you can get a fast pass, I'm sure they sell out, um, sell out, you're not paying for them. Um, I'm sure they get reserved really quickly, but people will wait, have been waiting in line for, you know, four or five hours for their child to see Anna and Elsa. So if that's something that's important to you, by all means, get a fast pass. Avoid the running of the bulls at rope drop when the park opens so that you don't have to race there with everybody else. Um, I really, really highly recommend fast passing this one if it's important to you. Okay, so let's move over to Epcot. Um, and in this park, you choose one ride from tier one and two rides from tier two. And I, if I'm not mistaken, they've even changed the tiers of some of the rides since the Fast Pass Plus came out. So again, this is just what's current today. Um, so the two most popular rides you can pick from, from tier one is, um, are Soren and Test Track. I personally picked Soren because I prefer that ride over the new Test Track. Um, but that one, and that line is also one of the more boring lines. There's not really a lot to look at. And by the time that line gets long, um, you're kind of standing in one place in a hallway for a really long time. Um, the Test Track line is interactive now. So at least then you'd have more things to do and to look at. Um, another option in that same tier is Living with the Land, which is one of my all-time favorite rides. I think I'm the only person whose favorite ride it is, but I really do like it. But I didn't pick that because I've never seen a line, let alone a long line. I'm, I mean, we always just walk right on. So you want to fast pass rides 
where the line is typically very long. That, that's the point of the fast pass. You bypass the line. So don't pick rides that never have a line. So then from tier two, uh, my choice would be Mission Space. I do not ride this ride because I get um, motion sick pretty easily, but this one would is a pretty popular ride and you would um, you could experience a pretty long line. So Mission Space would be a good choice. And my third choice I think here would be either the character spot, if that is important to you, or Maelstrom. And the reason behind this is, I mean, characters are always popular. You're always gonna have a little bit longer line for the characters. And Maelstrom, Depending on when you go, it probably isn't even necessary, but later on in the day, Maelstrom typically has a little bit longer of a line than some of the other tier two attractions, um, like the Finding Nemo ride, um, like at the Seas with Nemo and Friends. I have never ever experienced a line there, so I, I wouldn't want to use one of my three precious Fast Pass reservations on Nemo when there's not going to be a line there. Um, like I said, it's later in the day that Maelstrom is typically more popular and I've seen that one probably up to maybe 45 minutes or so. So, and that one again is kind of a boring line. So I think that would be a good use of a fast pass as well. Okay. Over to Hollywood studios. This is another one where you can choose one ride from tier one and two rides from tier two. So tier one, you'd either pick, I think it would be most beneficial to pick either Toy Story, Midway Mania, or Rock and Roller Coaster. If you want to avoid the running of the bulls, again, get a fast pass for Toy Story because that one is the one that everybody runs to. I mean, there's just mobs of people running toward that ride. And if it's important to you, get a fast pass for it. Later in the day, the line, um, during popular times of the year, the line can be over two hours long. And it's, I like the ride. It's a fun ride. I wouldn't wait two hours for it. There's so many other fun things to do at Disney that if, you know, there's a ride you want to do and it's really, really long, either do something else or try to plan to get a fast pass for that in advance. Um, my personal preference would be for Rock and Roller Coaster, I think. Um, well, I should say I like that ride better. I don't know that it would be um, a, the best use of a fast pass, but if I did get a fast pass for Rock and Roller Coaster, I would go right to Toy Story Midway, Midway Mania right away in the morning. Um, and then after that, I would use my Fast Pass for Rock and Roller Coaster. Okay, so my next two would be um, Tower of Terror because this line is another one that it is brutal when it is long. If you are outside, which most of the line, I actually think, yeah, most of the line is outside. It is um, shaded. There are trees there. It is shaded but it is still really hot during certain times of the year. And um, I mean, it's pretty, there's things to look at, but there's like, it's not interactive in any way. I think it would be boring for kids. So I would definitely fast pass Tower of Terror. We usually do when we go, at least with the old system we have in the past. My other one would be um, Voyage of the Little Mermaid. And this is just my personal preference of rides over the other tier two attractions. I don't do Star Wars. Um, again, the... I get motion sick, the simulator thing doesn't work for me. Um, I don't, I think Indiana Jones was on there as well and I don't know why you would use a fast pass for that. I've seen that show a couple of times um, and I don't, I wouldn't use a fast pass, fast pass for that personally, um, but the Voyage of the Little Mermaid, that would be extremely boring for children. There is absolutely nothing to look at. You're just, I mean, maybe like a picture or two of Little Mermaid on the wall or something. Um, but I think that would be a good use of a fast pass. Lastly, we're on to Animal Kingdom, and um, my first ride is Expedition Everest. Hands down, that is the most popular ride at Animal Kingdom. It is the newest ride, so definitely Expedition Everest. After that, um, I would say Kilimanjaro Safaris because that can be a boring line. There's nothing to do. There's, I mean, there's a couple of TVs um, with this video of a... Um, of like of somebody prepping you for the ride and the story behind the ride. Um, but it's kind of a boring and kind of a long line later on in the day. So that would be another good use of a fast pass. And lastly, I would do Festival of the Lion King because this people has more people waiting for the show right before it opens than I've ever seen at any of the other rides. Um, I think Collie River Rapids would be a good use of a fast pass. I personally wouldn't pick it. Um, I don't, 
care for that ride so much after getting completely soaked a couple of times and having to walk around with wet underwear for the rest of the day. And I'm not really into the whole um, wearing a poncho thing. So just a personal preference, I would pick Festival, Festival of the Lion King. I would not recommend Dinosaur because I, I'm sure there are busy times of the day, but I have never seen them. I have literally walked right on every single time. So that would not, it wouldn't make sense to pick a fast pass for that. Um, like I said, you can pick three fast passes per day, um, all in the same park. Once you've used up your third fast pass, you can go to a kiosk in a park and then book a fourth. Once you've used up the fourth, you can go to a kiosk and book a fifth and so on and so forth. Um, there are many nighttime shows that you can book a fast pass for, and then they have fast pass, um, viewing areas. So you don't have to stake out your claim for quite as long. I think otherwise it's at least an hour that you would have to sit, you know, if you're waiting for, um, the parade on main street, you'd have to sit at least an hour waiting, um, to get a good spot, if not longer. Um, so if you use, a, if you book a fast pass for one of these nighttime shows, you're never going to use that third one until the very end of the day. So you're not going to be able to get a fourth and fifth unless the park is open late and you could book a fast pass after that show. But that even then it's only if there's something available. Um, however, if you choose to do one, um, I would pick that. I think if I had small children and waiting for a really long time for a parade, you know, when there's nothing going on around you is not really a very good option. Um, that, that might be a good idea for some people, but for us, it really, um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but I could see why that would be a good choice for some people. So I hope this was helpful for some people with the new FastPass Plus system, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!